Hey guys, welcome to our channel. So we've been decoding MAM witch, changing to man witch. We got uh, our residue as evidence for this change, got our extractions, got those to go through all the categories, found the University of New Mexico, used a uh, numerology chart to convert that into numbers, the extractions to numbers, went through the categories there. And then we connected the University of New Mexico to Hunts Manwich, Manwich, um, through Gematria, and then connected those to the other 14 for a total of 15 effects we've connected so far through Gematria. And now we're on a simple binary, which we've got to run through the stock market, finance, medical, or uh, genetics, excuse me, medical, chemical, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, robotics, machinery, uh, military, laboratories, research groups, slash research. And now we are on technology. And I'm not going to go through these extractions again. We did that a lot, but an M change to an N in Manwich Manwich. That leaves you MN. And M is 0 and N is 1. So all you got is 0, 1. All right. Well, 0, 1. How about 0, 1 Technology Company, LTD? And they look like they deal with social media marketing. Um website and web application development, API development, and uh, integration. Yeah. <clears throat> so they deal with website development. So yeah. integration, database design, uh, penetration testing, and application. So few things there and that's forward and back is one zero and you get uh meta pure met in pure with diamond 10 technology uh meta pure with diamond 10 technology coding is a pvc free alternative that integrates science technology and design to advance quality of care in healing environments its patent pending formula is shaping the future of resilient flooring and empowers you with a new choice for impactful healthcare design. Need I say more? But with these, you also have, um, if I can find it, uh, you have uh, top 10 health technology hazards, but that wasn't what I was going to look at. Um, let's see if I can, let's see if it's still there. Cause sometimes when I go back, um, they're not there. Top 10. That wasn't what I was wanting. Trends. Trends, trends, 10 breakthrough technologies, trends, there, top 10 future technologies you've definitely not heard of. This was the one, so, <clears throat> so, uh. Thing, uh, technology number one would be femto second projection to photon lithography, and this is a 3D printing solution looking at looking for a problem. And over the past decade, the technology has failed to find a target audience. On one hand, 3D printers are still too expensive for the average Joe. On the other, they are not sophisticated and fast enough for large-scale manufacturing companies. So 3D printers, basically. Um, number two is Li-Fi. I've heard of this before. 
Uh, the name says it all. Li-Fi aims to use light to transmit information from point A to point B. The technology works by encoding digital data and turning LED bulbs on and off faster than humans can notice to transfer it. The light then travels to a photoreceptor, which can decode and translate the data to a more classic radio frequency. There's a lot of advantage to, to doing things this way. What with light being used to, at the, or light being used, the speed at which the information is transmitted is very, very high. Up to 100 G, G bits in th theory, five times faster than 5G. Furthermore, the sheer number of LED bulbs already around us hints at a potential future wherein cheap, accessible points to receive data are everywhere. Um, so, finally, the light waves used as the basis for Li-Fi do not pass through walls, but can, however, be reflected off of them. The risk of hacking is therefore much lower than with Wi-Fi, though this seriously limits indoor use cases. So, you're basically looking at internet with your light. Number three is energy storing bricks. Researchers have managed to store energy in the cheap red bricks we've been using for construction throughout the world for centuries. I, I used to do that, actually, um, uh, work with bricks. Uh, this process works for two reasons. Bricks are porous and contain something called hematite, which gives it its color. For these bricks to store, then release energy, researchers heat them to 160 degrees and, there, and vaporize their surface with hydrochloric acid mixed with an organic compound called E-DOT, E-D-O-T. When in contact with the hematite, this mix causes a chemical reaction creating a new plastic nanofiber coating called P-DOT. This polymer is trapped in the porous surface of the brick, forming a continuous and electrically conductive layer on each of its faces. The humble uh, building block can then act as an ion sponge to store and conduct electricity. That's interesting to me. I didn't know that was a thing. For now, the amount of energy these bricks can store is still low, but the proof of concept is, stag is a staggering success. That just blows my mind. It's possible to power a small lamp for 50 minutes with 60 bricks. Well, that wouldn't be very uh, convenient if you've ever worked with bricks before. 60 bricks to power a lamp for less than an hour. There'd be a lot of bricks laying around. <laughs> which doesn't sound like much until you realize it only takes 13 minutes for these bricks to recharge. Well, yeah, zippity doo I'm not so sure. I <laughs> you just got to have a bunch of bricks laid around to power your shit, I guess. Uh, this technology also has a long lifespan since even after 10,000 storage and Retrieval cycles, the bricks still retain 90% of their original capacity without altering the rate of charge and discharge. I'm, I'm skipping how it'll change the world, guys. I'm just... Oh, robotic bees. I don't think they're probably not doing this already. Let's be honest, it's not great out there climate-wise. Yeah, sure, whatever you say. And that's killing bees, yeah, sure, whatever you say, which we need to pollinate 35% of our crops, which we need for food, which we need for not being dead. Are we going to stop climate change or save the bees? Of course not. That's not how we roll. Instead, we're going to create robotic bees to pollinate plants just as the real things do. And by we, I mean Walmart. <laughs> Details are scarce, but most researchers estimate that the bees would work by attaching horsehair coat coated with ionic liquid gel to a tiny drone and the hair 
picks up pollen from one flower and moves it to the next. Researchers at Harvard have long been working on robo bees using such techniques. What Walmart offers on top is a wide array of sensors, cameras, artificial intelligence to locate the relevant crops and pollinate them as needed. <sighs> yeah, well, that's interesting. I've heard people claim that there was robo bugs out there. There probably are. And I suspect they're not for that purpose. That's just my opinion. Um, how about uh, unnamed dynamic neural networks technology? Neural network uses hidden layers to break down information, the input images, audio, video, handwritten text, into tiny pieces of easily understandable components, allowing a computer to inform a prediction about the nature of said input. It does this thanks to a wide array of training data and mathematical models. In doing so, it works similarly to our brain, hence the technology's name. This is far from new, but the world of data science has been on the lookout for faster and more efficient ways of using neural networks to serve the upcoming IoT revolution. So, uh, patent 1041117 proposes a way to do just that by storing the training data and mathematical models within the hidden layers nodes of the network itself, creating a short library that can be used to train another device. If you managed to get through this sentence, you understand that it gets a whole lot closer to how the brain actually works. Note that the marketers haven't gotten this one yet, hence the name. All right. So that's interesting. Uh, seawater fuel. What is it? When it comes to energy, the sea remains a massive untapped resource. It's not like we're going to run out of it anytime soon, unless you ask the Democrats. <laughs> what with the North Pole melting? Sure. And according to researchers, it could soon be put to good use as fuel for ships. Um, whoops. Um, here they just said the North Pole melting, and somebody had commented that they had read that the North Pole melted in 2009, which seems far-fetched, not that he heard that. It just seems far-fetched that that actually happened. So, And according to researchers, it could soon be put to good use to, as fuel for ships. Uh, the process uses a potassium-promoted molly Bedendum, a carbide catalyst. This ex extract to extract carbon dioxide from seawater, turning it into carbon monoxide via the reverse water gas shift reflect reaction. The carbon monoxide can in turn be converted into a hydrocarbon via the Fischer Tropsch synthesis. Ships can then use this hydrocarbon instead of pre-onboard fuel, which we know carries many risks. 20-minute uh, water. What is it? Well, what is it? And then it? Just immediately, how will it change the world? Well, let's see if it tells us what it is. The recipe was concocted especially for developing countries, remote areas where people don't have access to chemical treatments such as chlorine. <laughs> it could save you some of the 300, it could save some of the 300,000 children under five who die worldwide every year of waterborne diseases such as cholera, typhoid, and hepatitis. It could also help some of the 2.2 billion who don't have 
wastewater a wastewater treatment system. Um, they absolutely don't tell you what it is. Oh, apparently. Um, uh, more than eight. Unlike other innovations in this article, this one hardly has any downsides. It's very cheap. The amount of silver used for the nano wires. So apparently they use silver for nano wires. Is so small, the cost is negligible, and the electricity needed can be easily supplied by a small solar panel or a couple of 12 volt, volt batteries since the filter doesn't trap bacteria, killing them instead. It can have much larger pores, allowing water to speed through at a more rapid rate, more than 80,000 times faster than existing filters to be exact, and it does so without clogging an issue that plagues existing solutions. Still not sure exactly what it is, but <coughs> it's obviously a new water filtering system. Zero knowledge proof. Privacy. Ever heard of it? Computer scientists are perfecting a cryptographic tool we could use to prove, prove something without revealing the information underlying the proof. <sighs> okay, it sounds incredible, but not impossible once you wrap your head around the concept and fact, and the fact that it's a bit more complex than saying, come on, bro, you know I'm right. You know I'm good for it. <sighs> Zero knowledge proof. Well, that'll be perfect for people who like dancing around proof. Allow me to simplify through an example. Imagine, if you will, a man named John has a blind friend named Jane. He also has in his possession two marbles of different colors, though he, they are identical in shape and size. Jane puts them behind her back and shows one to John. She then does it again either changing the marble or showing the same one again, asking if this is the same marble previously shown. If John were guessing whether it was the same or not, <coughs> he would have a 50-50 chance of getting it right. So she does it again and again. And because John sees the marble's colors, he gets it right each time. And the chance that he guessed lucky diminishes. Jane thus knows that John knows which marble is the original shown and its color. Without her ever knowing the color of any of the marbles, boom, zero knowledge proof or zero knowledge sufficient non-interactive argument of knowledge if you are family. Obviously, if all gets mathematical and cryptographic from here, it, it all gets mathematical and cryptographic from here, but you get the gist. You're basically trusting somebody or something. All right. YOLO V5. A real-time object detection is a tech real-time object detection is a technique used to detect objects from video. It's the underlying technology behind, well, most things we want to use in the future from Tesla's self-driving cars to Amazon's cashless stores. You only look once. Models refer to some of the most versatile and famous real-time objects detection models. So it's an object detection model. Whoop. And 4D printing as opposed to 3D printing. 4D printing can lead to confusion. I am not implying that humanity will be able to create and access another dimension. Only Rubik can do that. <laughs> to put to put simply, a 4D printer product is a 3D printer object, a, a 3D printed object, which can change properties when a specific stimulus is applied. Submerged underwater, heated, shaken, not stirred. Uh, the 4D is therefore time, time needed for the stimulus to be relevant. And uh, there's your 10. Whoo, that went a little long, but I thought that was interesting, probably worth it. So 
That gets you through going forwards and backwards in technology. And we'll do random next. And then we will convert these to the alphabetic order and start over uh, as a test run for the South America 1500 mile move. So for now, guys, thanks for all your thumbs up, thumbs down when appropriate. Thanks for all your comments, leads, feedback, and subscriptions. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. And for now, you guys have a great rest of your day.